Hey everyone, welcome to this psychology series. In this video, we are going to talk about sensory processes. Sensory processes refers to the way the nervous system receives messages from the senses and turns into responses. Let us now look at some of the sensory processes. In the human visual system, the eye receives physical stimuli in the form of light and sends those stimuli as electrical signals to the brain which interprets the signals as images. The eye has three main layers. They are the sclera which includes the cornea. The next is the choroid which includes the pupil, iris and lens and the retina which includes receptor cells called rods and cones. Vision is based on the perception of electromagnetic rays. These rays enter the eye through the pupil, travels through the cornea, the lens and the interior of the eyeball to strike the rod and cone cells of the retina at the back of the eyeball. Human beings are capable of highly complex vision that allows us to perceive colors and depth in intricate detail. Visual stimulus transduction happens in the retina. Photoreceptor cells found in this region have the specialized capability of phototransduction or the ability to convert light into electrical signals. There are two types of these photoreceptor cells. They are rods which are responsible for scotopic vision that is night vision and cones which are responsible for photopic vision that is daytime vision. Generally speaking, cones are for color vision and rods are for shadows and light differences. The front of your eye has many more cones than rods while the sides have more rods than cones. For this reason, your peripheral vision is sharper than your direct vision in the darkness but your peripheral vision is also in black and white. Color sensors are found within cones which respond to relatively broad color bands in the three basic regions of red, green and blue. Any colors in between these three are perceived as different linear combinations of RGB. The eye is much more sensitive to overall light and color intensity than changes in the color itself. Depth perception refers to our ability to see the world in three dimensions. With this ability, we can interact with the physical world measuring the distance to a given object. While depth perception is often attributed to binocular vision, that is vision from two eyes, it also relies heavily on monocular cues that is from only one eye to function properly. These cues range from the convergence of our eyes and accommodation of the lens to optical flow and motion. Next, the human sense of hearing is attributed to the auditory system. It uses the ear to collect, amplify and transduce sound waves into electrical impulses that allow the brain to perceive and localize sounds. The ear can be divided into the outer ear, middle ear and inner ear, each of which has a specific function in the process of hearing. The outer ear is the external portion of the ear which can be seen on the outside of the human head. It includes the pinna, the ear canal and the most superficial layer of the eardrum, the tympanic membrane. The outer ear's main task is to gather sound energy and amplify sound pressure. The pinna helps the brain determine the location of the sound. The sound waves enter the ear canal which amplifies the sound into the eardrum 
Once the wave has vibrated the tympanic membrane, sound enters the middle ear. The middle ear is an air-filled tympanic, which means drum-like cavity that transmits acoustic energy from the ear canal to the cochlea in the inner ear. This is accomplished by the three bones in the middle ear. They are the malus, the incus, and the stapes. The malus is connected to the mobile portion of the eardrum. It senses sound vibrations and transfers them onto the incus. The incus is the bridge between the malus and the stapes. The stapes transfers the vibration from the incus to the oval window that is the portion to the inner ear to which it is connected. Through these steps, the middle ear acts as a gatekeeper to the inner ear protecting it from damage by loud sounds. Unlike the middle ear, the inner ear is filled with fluid. When the stapes footplate pushes down on the oval window in the inner ear, it causes movement in the fluid within the cochlea. The function of the cochlea is to transform mechanical sound waves into electrical or neural signals for use in the brain. Within the cochlea, there are three fluid-filled spaces. They are the tympanic canal, the vestibular canal, and the middle canal. Fluid movement within these canals stimulates half cells of the organ of corti, a ribbon of sensory cells along the cochlea. These half cells transform the fluid waves into electrical impulses using cilia, a specialized type of mechanosensor. Cochlea is the main sensory organ of hearing located in the inner ear. The cochlea separates sounds according to their place on the frequency spectrum. Humans are able to hear a wide variety of sound frequencies from approximately 20 to 20,000 Hertz. Our ability to judge or estimate where a sound originates is called localization. The next sense that we are going to talk about is taste. The gustatory system, including the mouth, tongue and taste buds, allows us to transduce chemical molecules into specific taste sensations. The gustatory system uses a form of chemoreception that allows the human body to interpret chemical compounds in ingested substances as specific tastes. There are five main types of taste sensations. They are bitter, salty, sweet, sour and umami. The sense of taste is transduced by taste buds which are cluster of 50 to 100 taste receptor cells located in the tongue soft palate, epiglottis, pharynx, and esophagus. The tongue is the main sensory organ of the gustatory system. The tongue contains papillae or specialized epithelial cells which have taste buds on their surface. Each taste bud has a flask-like shape and is formed by two types of cells which are supporting cells and gustatory cells. The gustatory cells are sensitive to the chemicals present within the food that are ingested and they release neurotransmitters based on the amount of chemical present in the food. Neurotransmitters from the gustatory cells can activate sensory neurons in the facial, glossopharyngeal and vagus cranial nerves. The next is the olfactory system which gives humans their sense of smell by collecting odorants from the environment and transducing them into neural signals. Olfaction is a type of chemoreception. Like gustation, this sensory system uses the molecular chemical components in substances to get information about the environment. The main sensory organ responsible for the human sense of smell is the nasal cavity. It contains the olfactory receptors that perform the transduction of odors into neural impulses. 
Olfaction is the sense most closely tied to memory because of its close neural connections to areas of the brain responsible for emotion and place memory. The olfactory nerve connects the olfactory system to the central nervous system to allow processing of order information. Humans can differentiate between 10,000 different orders. The next is the somatosensory system which allows the human body to perceive the physical sensations of pressure, temperature and pain. The human sense of touch is known as the somatic or somatosensory system. Touch is the first sense developed by the body and the skin is the largest and most complex organ in the somatosensory system. By gathering external stimuli and interpreting them into useful information for the nervous system, skin allows the body to function successfully in the physical world. Touch receptors in the skin have three main subdivisions. They are mechanoreceptors, which is the sense of pressure, thermoreception, which is the sense of heat, and nociception, which is the sense of pain. Receptor cells in the muscles and joints called proprioceptors also aid in the somatosensory system but they are also sometimes separated into another sensory category called kinesthesia. Mechanoreceptors can be free receptors or encapsulated. Examples of free receptors are the hair receptors in the root of the hairs while encapsulated receptors are the receptors in hairless skin. Thermoreceptors detect changes in temperature through their free nerve endings. There are two types of thermoreceptors that signal temperature changes in our own skin, which are warm and cold receptors. Our sense of temperature is a result of the comparison of the signals from each of the two types of thermoreceptors. Nociceptors use free nerve endings to detect pain. In addition to the traditional big five senses, neuroscientists say that we are a bundle of senses. Many would argue that we have anywhere between 22 and 33 different senses. Here are some of them. Equilibrioception is a sense of balance. This is what keeps us upright and helps us make our way around without getting hurt. Proprioception is knowing which parts of your body are where without looking. It is how we can type without looking at the keyboard for instance or walking around without having to watch our feet. Kinesthesia is the sense of movement and chronoception is how we sense the passing of time. 